Behind me is the South Worth Paper Company. Back in the 1850s, they built a dam here in West Springfield. And that dam prevented the anadromous fish like shad and salmon, alewives and herring, from getting over a waterfall that previously they had been able to negotiate. Now there's a fish ladder. And the fish ladder on the Westfield River was a long time coming. That factory was put up in the 1850s, and of course it needed a dam to impound a reservoir and move the water of the Westfield River through a canal and into the factory to turn the turbines that would move the machinery that made the paper. And it's a really cool little area if you just want to see how a New England factory system looked in the 19th century. But we're focused on the fish ladder in this episode, so come on along. The dam on the Westfield River was built to power the turbines that make this factory system possible. It used to be a lot bigger than it is now, I'll tell you. The largest of the paper companies, the Strathmore paper companies, came down back in the 90s. This is quite a sizable canal. And building these canals in West Springfield led to the separation of West Springfield's North Parish, which today is the city of Holyoke. This canal is just a tiny shadow of what they built up there. So below me right here, you can see one of those sandstone outcroppings creating a natural little fall. And the native people, the Agawam and the people that were here before them, because they push somebody out, use these rivulets, these little falls, to trap the shad, salmon, herring, alewives, whoever was coming up the river, and basically have a meal. Now, up the river further, in Agawam, we have a, uh, well, up the river further between West Princeton and Agawam, we have a fish weir that's still there. I've done a video on it. You can see the waterfall right there made of 8 by 8 and cribs, old school style dam. They made cribs, filled them with rock, <laughs> and they dammed the river. So, this is an easy river to dam because it's got a very variable water level. The drainage of the Westfield River is not that great. Well, it's a really steep drainage. And what that means is it loses water really quickly if there's not a lot of rain. And I found that out as a kid when I was, uh, I was fishing here. There'd be days when the fish would be coming up like crazy, and there'd be days when they weren't. And some of that has to do with the sluice way up here. They had the canal open, the river is much lower. If they shut the, the canal here, river's much higher. So what you're looking at here is the beginning of the fish ladder. And what you have is you have the canal being opened up and a series of steps going down to the pool down below, which is where the shad congregate, and the other anadromous fish. So what they'll do is they'll come in and they'll work their way up this torrent below us, which is a series of steps. They can swim up that no problem at all. Back 30 years ago, 20 years ago, before they built the fish ladder, you would see thousands of shad and occasionally a salmon swimming in a gigantic circle here because this was as far as they could go. Now these shad are going to get over that dam and they're going to go to Warnoco and that's as far as they're going to go. So it's kind of an interesting thing and finally we smartened up and put in a fish ladder. This is not a major construction project compared to the dam and the factories and the canal. How much did it cost to do this? Not so much. And you keep the biological resources of the river whole and the river systems moving the way they should. Mr. Tassadari was my original chaperone during the Gettysburg trip. You and Mr. Uh, Patty, Patty's father, O'Brien. Yeah. So we had a ball then, and you just did your own tour now. And he knew all about it, thank you. Yeah, we had a great time that oh, year. And that was, well. it was so good, I did it for the next, like, 15 years. That's cool. I haven't been doing it lately because of the COVID, you know. Yeah. But uh, these guys are here to tour the 
you know, the shad lift because you're off. And you, you guys are, you know, you're at the Big E and you guys are West Side people. I have never been on this site before other than in a canoe down below. So, just like me, you guys are here for the first time. And you're like me, you're wishing you had the fishing pole, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> right? No, I wish I had my kayak. Oh, yeah. So if you're still watching the video, of course I had technical difficulty and the sound went dead on me. But what I did was walk down to where the fish ladder enters the pool under the dam. And the shad can swim from the pool that you see on the other side of the cement into the ladder. Now, I got to tell you... You saw that little cutie that was standing next to me, that little girl. And this isn't a child safe area. As you can see, there's a railing and nothing to prevent somebody from falling over the side and into that fish ladder, which would put them right into the tail race. So if you do go for a tour down here, make sure you keep a hand on your child at all times if you bring them or maybe your elderly aunt. But I have been fishing this pool and the areas around it since I was a middle school kid and long before this fish ladder was placed in. And it was always filled with shad and, like I said, occasional salmon, lots of other fish species. But you wouldn't catch the shad under the dam for some reason. They never bit. So we used to have to go downstream a little bit. And here I am talking about it. You can see the dam that was made back in the 1850s of wooden cribs. And I think it's hilarious to think about that dam still standing. And of course, as I'm talking, just like I met uh, a couple of parents, the Tazanaries, that I had uh, the privilege of having their son in my class, I start meeting former students. Kid that I had back in the 90s, and we were talking about just, you know, things, what's happening. You're probably glad you're not hearing it. And the next thing I know, I got <laughs> another student that I met, uh, and her children, and her husband, so it was really cool. I mean, anyways, the whole point here is to tour the fish ladder, and the community of West Springfield came out in mass to check it out. So the fish collect in the pool. They follow the running water that's going down the ladder from the canal. They ascend the ladder, which is under the feet that you can see standing there, and they get into the canal, and then they continue on their way up the river. It was hard to get any images of shad here, but believe me, there were a lot of them, and I've included a couple pictures as we're going, so you can see the American shad, herring, alewives, and Atlantic salmon, should one come along, and even the lamprey. So I hope you enjoyed our little tour of the fish lab. So walking up the fish ladder now with shad under my feet, we've seen a little bit of what's being done to try to restore the Anadromous fish populations here on the Westfield River, and it's pretty cool. So next time there's an open house, you might want to get down here, inspect the old McNeg Dam, and check out the shad.